So the brake hub itself, this is a 506 brake hub. Uh, so if you're ever wondering what it is, it's a 506 brake hub. Uh, if you're ever ordering a brake hub and you don't know, remember 506. And you have to have that, you need to know that because the brake rotor itself, this rotor only fits on a 506. Now, we only really sell a 506, so if you're ordering from the Tiger website, you're gonna be fine, you don't have to worry about it, but just in case, I just wanna let you know that. The hub itself, right here, is similar to most hubs that go on the axle, has a set screw right here that locks it to the axle itself, tightens down and locks it to the axle. If you look at the one that's on the car, you can see that it's tightened down. Uh, as the slot sh shrinks, it tightens against the axle. There is a key. You can see the little edge of the key stock right there. Once again, there's a custom slot in this axle that doesn't allow that key stock to move. The key stock is built custom for this axle and that slot. Now, what we like to do is uh, you'll see that the bolts are threaded through. Let me show you here. You can see the hub sits nicely inside the rotor. These bolts here go through. You would typically want to do it like this from the other side. Show you here. Through the rotor. And then thread into the hub itself. Just like that. It sits like that and it threads in like that. And there's three of them. Now, we sell these in titanium as well. Uh, the standard cart does not come with titanium ones. And you'll notice on this car, once we do the installation, we also wire tie. That's why there's a hole in the head of these bolts so that we can wire tie. And if you look over here on this side, you can see uh, the wire ties that go from each bolt so that those bolts can't prematurely or can't come loose, can't come out of the car. Um, you can also see the key stock a little bit better there. So now if we wheel back around to this other side, back to the back, I can show you once you have this hub on the axle and you have the rotor on, one of the things you have to do is you'll notice that mine is not tight. And so it's rubbing on, we'll move it over that way. It's rubbing on the brake pad. Well, we can't have that. And so what you want to do is make sure that you get it centered and if you come back here and look back here, you'll notice that you can see that rotor not centered left and right. You want to make sure that that rotor is centered in the middle of those pads. It should have no drag. It should not touch either of the brake pads. And you can see I have it in about the right place right there. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is snug that down so that it's in the center of those brake pads. And this is often something you want to check when your driver comes in off the racetrack is make sure that it is spinning freely and it, the rotor is not nicking or touching either side of those brake pads. This is definitely a bolt I would put anti-seize on. I can't tell you how many times we've seen people have issues where this bolt wants to seize up inside of that hub. So I would definitely put anti-seize on those threads right there. So now it's tightened down. We have our safety wire on it. It spins freely. It doesn't nick or touch uh, the brake pads uh, and the brake should function correctly. By the way, this is an eighth inch uh, brake rotor. There are three sixteenths ones sold as well. Uh, you will need to adjust the brake pads and their location to be able to use a three sixteenths on our car, um, but that's a later video. We'll talk about how to do that as well. So we're going to install or deinstall uh, the brake caliper itself. I'll show you how all these components go together. So we always put safety pins in the end of these long uh, brake caliper bolts. So I'll pull the safety pins out first. And then we will loosen nuts on these guys. So I have both the nuts off of these two bolts. There's a washer. It's going to go under that nut on both sides. There's a wolf plate. This is a protective plate that blocks uh, the rotor in case anything were to happen. That plate, as you can see, it'll just slide right off of there. Take that piece off. 
set that aside. Let's see if I can set that somewhere to stay. Then the, the long bolts that go through the caliper, the caliper is two pieces. There's a left and a right caliper here. Um, and this already, uh, these brakes have already been bled. Um, so I want to be careful with this, but I'm going to pull off this caliper off that side. I'm just going to set it over here. Uh, all of our cars come with uh, Kevlar uh, brake lines and a Kevlar sleeve for uh, the accelerator pedal. They ought to outlast uh, all of us. Um, then you'll notice the other side of the caliper is here. I'll pull that off as well. Let those hang there for a second. Now we have the two bolts and there's the bracket that the caliper actually bolts to. So I'll go ahead and pull these bolts out so I can show you this. Each of these bolts has a washer on it on this side of the caliper as well. So you can see that each has that washer there as well. We'll set those up here with the wolf plate and get them to stay there. Now we have the bracket. This bracket only fits on the left side. Um, some cars have brakes on the right side. Uh, they would need a different bracket to do that. This car could accept that as well. Uh, we choose uh, for very specific reasons to mount the brake on this side of the car uh, for the stealth specifically. So this bracket uses, uh, well, what size is this? This is a 532nd Allen. And it just bolts into the cassette. The cassette itself has a little recess in it. We loosen this one right here. The cassette itself, I'll show you when I pop this off of here. So these bolts are specific to this mount. Takes two of them. You can see this is the part, that's the piece itself. You can see the recess in the cassette right here that's made specifically for this brake caliper mount. And you'll notice that these bolts have a taper, so they sit flush down in here inside that mount. This mount will only go on here one direction. Uh, you can't really can't put it on backwards. Um, and so then we just put the bolts back in, and then we can go back through the reassembly of this. So let's just go back through that real quick here. Get these guys started back in here. See if I can kick myself my wrench. Here we go, we get the Allen wrench in here. Spin these guys down. Here's the other end. Snug him up. Snug them up. Snug them up. All right, now, go back to the caliper. Now, when you're installing these calipers, you want to make sure that the bleeder is on top. You always want the bleeder on top because the air bubbles, if you don't have it on top, the air bubbles will get stuck when you're bleeding the brakes in the bottom. So you need it on top. So the air bubbles uh, rise to the top in the chamber in here on both sides, and then you can pop this real quick and easy, and it'll bleed the air out uh, of the top. So that's just something simple to think about. Um, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've seen people put them on backwards uh, or whatever. I mean, an easy way if you put it on backwards before you actually bleed them is you can just take these fittings out and swap them uh, if you need to. That's not really a big deal. So let's go ahead and reassemble this. We have the bolt with the washer, the one through the top. Got another one, bolt with the washer, slide it through the top, or the bottom. Line this up. If this doesn't slide on smoothly, then you may need to move one of these bolts. This hole, there's a couple different options here. You want it, you want these bolts to be in the two holes that are closest to each other, not furthest part, closest to each other. Then this uh, caliper will slide right on. So it slides right on, boop, all there is to that. Then we get the other side of the caliper, Slide it on, obviously brake pads facing each other. Slide it on like that, no big deal, pretty easy. Don't forget the wolf plate. Forget that, you're gonna have to take it all back off and do it again. So the wolf plate really only go in one place. I'm gonna put it in here. You can adjust it how far away from the rotor you want it to be. Um, we normally go all the way up. 
And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead, slide this guy on here, my washer's out of my hand. Washer, washer, like that. Nut started, the other nut started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down. I'm not gonna get crazy farmer tight. I'm just gonna tighten them down nice and snug. Um, I don't want to influence uh, how this caliper is going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these snug down and then I'm gonna put the safety uh, snap pins in the ends of these bolts as well, just to prevent anything that could happen where the nut could back off. And that's basically how you install uh, the brake caliper on the back of the Wraith or of the Stealth. 